Well, hello everybody. In this episode, we're going to be talking about your deck-mounted Roman tub valve. Uh, now, this one here, the trim is actually a Peerless. Peerless is the sister company of Delta, so uh, we'll be using a Delta rough-in valve and our Peerless trim here. Um, these are pretty neat and they're becoming really common nowadays. Uh, they can be mounted on the deck on this uh, freestanding tub here. Uh, they can also be mounted on a tile deck. Um, but we're going to pretty much talk about this one and this video is primarily for the rough end part. So uh, let's take a look at these valves. Now I have two styles here. These are the uh, newer styles. There was an older style that had a nut, big nut you had to screw up from underneath. Uh, and it was a real pain. It, it really was. And if you had to do anything after the fact, if it was um, a drop-in tub in a tile surround, uh, you really couldn't get to it. Uh, you had to pull some of the tile off and get in there if something came loose. Uh, so Delta has uh, this deal. Now, this is the older style one here, and it's uh, kind of falling apart because we don't use this one anymore. But uh, the difference is it's got these copper bendy pieces um, here. Now this one you would have to sweat in. Uh, this is an older style. We don't really use this one too much. Um, the new style one that we use looks like this. Now this is um, already PEX ready for you. It's already got the fittings on the bottom there. Um, and there's a couple pieces to uh, take note here. Um, this one is the cold water valve. Um, they're going to have a sticker on it, a white sticker that says this is the hot side. So this is the hot side. Uh, that straight piece is your incoming, and the other piece there is your outgoing. Um, and it does have um, the, the uh, part for the spout. Uh, some of them uh, have a side sprayer, which it'll have another one of these little pieces like this to attach your side sprayer. But this one that's PEX ready comes with a PEX 90, a brass PEX 90, and you're going to do your connection out of PEX, where the old one had a brass fitting and you actually had to sweat. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll talk about this uh, valve body itself. Now, the valve body has a special washer on the front of it, and that turns, if you rotate it, um, about 180 degrees that washer will pop off and it's got a cardboard piece here. Uh, this is to kind of give your tile guys something to tile up to if it's going to be uh, a tile deck like a drop-in tub and not actually mounted to the surface of the tub uh, you're going to have to use that and they can adjust it later. Uh, but as you see there is a collar here that moves up and down with these two little screws. Uh, and that's how you would adjust it up and down to clamp it to the tub deck after you put your little washer on here. Now I'm just kind of kind of giving you a little overview here of how it works. This might make more sense when we take our valve apart. Um, but that's pretty much it. There's a hot and there is a cold and then there is a piece for your spout. And they all pretty much work the same way. Um, so let's get into uh, how to drill your holes. I'm going to take this apart and we're going to kind of look at how to drill your holes. Alright, well I said I was going to take this apart but I'm not going to do it yet because I want to talk a little bit about how you lay this out. Now all of this stuff comes with a little piece of paper with instructions telling you how to do it and how to drill your hole size. Just be careful. Um, pretty much we're going to be drilling an inch and a half hole for our, our valves. Uh, some of the applications call for a two inch hole, but that's when you've got an unfinished tile deck and you're mounting it to the wood and you're going to screw this from underneath. Uh, but this is the type we see. Now, they give you a range of dimensions from handle to handle. Uh, some of them will go all the way up to like 16 inches. That's up to you, but it helps out a lot if you have the trim. Most of the time when we're dealing with freestanding tubs, you're going to have the job, you're going to do the rough end part, and then you're also going to put the trim on as well. Uh, so if you've got the trim, 
the trick is you just don't want the handles to touch the spout. Um, so our rule of thumb, we say 10 inches from center to center, from center to center. Now, uh, I know you can't really read my tape here because I'm in the way, um, but this one I actually roughed in at nine inches. And I did that because I had the trim. And that's what worked best for this peerless valve. Now, some of the Delta valves, uh, there's a Windermere that's got like a big wing looking handle on it. Um, that one you're probably gonna wanna go for 10. So our good rule of thumb is 10, especially if you're roughing in and you don't have the trim and you don't know where these things are gonna hit. Because the last thing you want is to cut a tub and then your handles are tapping that, tapping that spout. Uh, once you drill a tub, you've drilled the tub. Now for the center hole, you're always gonna line up on the drain or the overflow. Or if it's just a round tub, just a drop-in tub and you're actually deck mounting it, you might put it on the corners down here somewhere. That you're just gonna kinda eyeball it and if it looks pretty to you, it's probably gonna be amazing to a non-plumber. Just remember that. Um, a lot of people aren't looking at it with that, that plumber's eye. They're looking at it cosmetically. Uh, and if you've done enough of these, uh, you'll get it pretty quick. But on the freestanding tubs, I always like to line up with this overflow. There's a sticker in the middle and then the drain down there. And you can kind of do a little pencil drawing here to get your center. And then you go five inches to either side of that. Now you can go more. You can, you can go more, you could go 12 if you wanted to, but you get too far out, it looks kind of weird. And especially if you're dealing on a curved edge, um, that can be complicated too. All right, so I'm gonna take the trim off this valve and we're gonna look at how it's roughed in. So I've taken the trim off now to show you how it kind of looks at your rough in stage. Uh, and the trim's pretty simple. It's just your spout with a little Allen uh, set screw back here. Um, and when you're putting this on, remember there's a, an O-ring right here. If that O-ring's damaged or anything like that, it could cause a leak when this thing's running and it'll leak down into these holes and it might look like it's something other than just a simple O-ring and a tub spout. Uh, so just remember that, look here first. Sometimes these people get uh, the, that rough end part kind of twisted and this doesn't sit all the way down on there and it'll leak too. But uh, the trim's real simple. Um, it also has your uh, escutcheons. It's a big, weird German word, I believe, that screw down on here to make it look pretty. And there's some handles. But that's uh, pretty much all there is to it. Now, you can see this is tight. It's clamped down. Uh, if you remember me showing you how this guy works, um, you can line it up. What you're gonna do is you screw tighten these screws down and it basically raises this clamp. It brings it up as the screws run down into here, riding on this little uh, collar piece. It's gonna run that up till it clamps itself down and then it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, it's, it's really simple. These things can be tough if you're working with a finished tile deck and you're trying to do something down inside of here, this thing's twisted or kicked off to one side. Uh, sometimes these screws, if say if you adjust one too far out, it can get weird like that and you have to get in there and straighten it up. But it's, it's really not that bad. The most important part uh, when doing this is actually drilling your tub. Because once you've drilled it, you've drilled it. And if you mess up, you just cost yourself a bunch of money unless you know a good tub repair guy that can patch those holes for you. But then you're going to be drilling through a repair. so. You want to nail this the first time. Remember, the spout part is in the center, of course. Uh, and then you're going to want these two. Uh, it says anywhere from 6 to 16 inches, I believe. Um, but our standard kind of found out that if you do it at 10, you're going to be all right. Um, now, if you've got the trim with you, you can kind of look at where these handles are. And I said this before. to get that measurement. So we would drill our holes. Now these are inch and a half holes. The one in the center you're gonna have to drill it a little bit smaller, maybe uh, inch and a quarter or something like that because that little washer is just a little bit smaller and an inch and a half will fall through there. 
Uh, now I have done some repairs where I had to fix this and come up with some pretty interesting ways to get that hole that was over drilled back together. But remember, you do have the width of the base of the spout to cover anything you've done there. Same with these. You've got the excursions, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of room to play with. But when mounting this, you want it to be perfectly straight up and down. If it's a freestanding tub like this, you're probably going to be doing the whole project on your own. Uh, but yeah, to loosen these, I would take my screwdriver. You're going to need the flathead part of your screwdriver. And you're going to uh, just loosen these screws. And somebody has it really, really tight. I'm kind of doing this backwards. Um, this is part of our training center here, and um, I really don't want to go cutting too much apart because uh, somebody could come in here later, flip the handle on my uh, ball valve over there, and then we've got a mess out here because they didn't know what was up. And I got a little ahead of myself, so I'm trying to turn that before I was where I needed to be. Um, this is where a lot of inexperienced plumbers decide to give up. Call in somebody else. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. Um, and it is being really, really difficult. There we go. Gosh. Right there. But there's your little washer. <coughs> now, um, you're going to drill these holes. I don't know if you can see the hole. It's drilled. It should be an inch and a half. It's an inch and a half. And I did set mine at nine inches apart. But we, if you don't know what trim's going on here, you're going to want to do ten or better. I wouldn't go too crazy with it. But basically, you're going to build this valve um, outside. Um, I would measure when you're building the valve. I would measure from hot to cold. Or, sorry, cold to hot. That's another thing to remember. When you're doing a Roman tub valve, and when you're doing any valve, uh, a lavatory or something like that, any of them, hot is on the left, cold is on the right as you're facing it. Like if you were using it, hot's on the left, cold's on the right. So if I were to put that valve over here or down here, it's not going to be as the person's using it sitting outside of the tub. It's going to be as the person sitting in front of it looking at it. So it's going to be hot on the left, cold on the right. Now, you know, if you're on the other side, it, it would look kind of backwards, but it's not. You want to be facing that valve. So, but you're going to build this with your hot and cold pieces and your PEX piece, your T coming in to your spout valve. Now, this one um, is for a handheld. If you got a handheld, you're going to put your handheld down over here. Um, <clears throat> based about five inches off because this handle is going to go the other way, right? You don't want it touching where your handheld is going and you don't want it touching your spout. So pretty much five inches from here to there, five inches from here to there, five inches from here to there. If you're doing a sprayer, uh, we see these about 50% of the time. And it does have a special valve that has a hose on the end of it. Uh, now, these kits I have are kind of random. Uh, some pieces have been taken out of it, but they all work pretty much the same. You will have a hose on there, and you'll have a hose coming up through here at the rough end, and then the trim, you'll connect those two hoses together. Uh, it's not bad. I think the worst part is drilling the tub. Just getting it lined up to where you want to drill it. Go slow, be patient, get you a hole saw, a nice one, uh, and Mark it off with a pencil. Don't go crazy with it. And go slow and be careful. Wear your dust mask because this is fiberglass and it kicks off a whole lot of stuff that you don't really want in your lungs. So always remember that. Uh, but it's pretty simple. Now in this freestanding tub, <clears throat> I would go ahead, build your valve, and then put you some pieces of red and blue pecs for your hot and cold on the ends of that. You can flip this thing over it's open on the bottom. Now it's pretty tight in between these walls here. And you can kind of take those two pieces of pecs and slip it up through there. Um, 
and I'll try to get you some clips here of how this one's done from underneath um, if I can. But that's it. It's really simple. If you get these things twisted off to the side like that, you're going to have a hard time. you got to work those screws together. If you try to tighten down one without the other, it's going to flip this little ring all crazy like and you're going to have a tough time with it. Uh, and it's, it's not fun. But that's basically it. you got to get the thing loose enough to where you can get this piece back down on there and it's probably going to give me a hard time going back together. But put it, get it on there, get it in that groove, and turn it 90 degrees. I think I said 180 earlier, but it's actually 90 degrees. And then line it up. It's going to want to flop around on you a little bit. Like I said, I did this one at 9. There it is. And we're going to tighten it down. A lot of people are just, young plumbers, are just so scared of doing this because they don't want to drill a tub. They don't want to be responsible for it. Well, starting off in plumbing, you're going to drop at least one toilet. In 20-something in years, you're going to drop at least one toilet. Uh, you're going to drop at least one drop-in bowl, which is these porcelain bowls. I got one down here. You can't see it. Uh, the porcelain products, you're, like I said, you're going to drop at least one toilet. You're going to screw up on a tub. Hopefully, it's on a tub wall, on a four-piece or three-piece tub, as some people call it. There's actually four pieces, and you might luck out and be able to get just that wall section. But measure it twice, cut it once. It's always the way to go. But that's the basic gist of it. Thanks, guys.